Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this new study and this new investigation coming out of the Event Horizon Telescope that was responsible for the black hole M87. Now in this particular study the scientists looked at something else really incredible and discovered that this right here is actually moving at about 20 times the speed of light. So let's talk about this and welcome to other math. But let's obviously start with the whole speed of light thing. How can anything move faster than the speed of light? Well, this is moving at about 20 times the speed of light, but it's actually a kind of a visual illusion. The jet itself is actually only moving at approximately 99.5% of the speed of light, but because the jet itself is pointed almost directly at us, this creates an illusion of light moving ridiculously fast. Now I've actually explained this in one of the previous videos about the jet from M87 and you can learn more about this in the video I made approximately 3 months ago where the much younger, much more well kept Anton versus this version right here that's basically the quarantine version explains to you how all of this works. The version right here decided not to do that and as a matter of fact I'm actually going to be releasing a separate video about the so called super luminous velocity that's going to be uh, coming out in the next few weeks or so. But the natural of all of this is that if you were to stare almost directly at the so-called astrophysical jet in this way, the actual angle between the jet itself and the accretion disk of this particular black hole is roughly around 2 degrees. So if you were to do this, the light would appear to move roughly around 20 times the speed of light. If however the angle was much larger, like for example if it was about 20 degrees, it would not appear to move as fast. In this case, it would only be about 6 times speed of light, and the larger the angle, the lower the apparent speed. But what exactly is this thing that we're looking at, where is it located, and why was it actually important to begin with? Well, it turns out, when the scientists from the EHT, the Event Horizon Telescope, were taking the picture of M87 black hole, and right before they released it, roughly around a year ago, they were first actually using this other very well known galaxy to try to essentially establish certain parameters. They basically used it as a kind of a calibrator for what was about to happen with the M87 black hole. And to try to create this image, they had to use all of these various facilities across the planet, the data from which was then connected all together into one single image that created the M87 black hole. But obviously there was a lot more data that was not processed yet, and some of this data was from that blazer known as 3C279. That's the image you see right here. So in a nutshell, if we were to actually look at how all of this was done, each individual facility observed the same location in space for a certain period of time as you can see right here, and then this network was actually joined together and all of the data was combined using relatively complex algorithms to try to discover what we're looking at. And one of those things they were looking at was this right here. But unlike M87 black hole that's about 55 million uh, light years away from us, this blazer is about 100 times as far. It's about 5 billion light years away from us. And the only reason we can see it so well is because of its jet being pointed almost directly at us. Which is actually the definition of a blazer. Here's probably one of the better pictures that can explain all of this in a single image. A blazer is essentially an active galactic nuclei galaxy where the black hole itself is so extremely powerful that it's projecting its jet almost directly at us or even directly at us. And unlike Quasar where usually the jet can be uh, slanted and it's actually not pointed at us, so we normally even see other parts of the galaxy that can be visible to us, in case of a blazer like this, the only thing we can actually see is only the jet itself. Nothing else is visible either because it's too far away or because the jet itself is so ridiculously powerful that it sort of outshines everything else in the vicinity, which is actually is the case for this particular uh, galaxy. And one thing we knew about 3C279 even before this study is that this is one of the most unpredictable and most variable blazers out there. The entire spectrum of light that it has, including visual light, radio light, x-ray light, seems to change a lot. And its most extreme period was actually back in 1987 and lasted for about 4 years when it actually became the brightest gamma ray object 
in the entire universe. So in that sense, it's actually a really fascinating galaxy and definitely something we would like to study a little bit more. But obviously it's really, really far away from us and it's difficult to see because of the distances. As a matter of fact, M87 is not only 100 times closer to us, but it's also about 5 times more massive making it a lot easier to see than this. So this was just used as a calibration, nothing else. But even in the short time we got to observe this blazer, we were able to discover something really unusual about the jet itself. Now, not the fact that it's actually moving so fast, or appears to move so fast, it was actually the shape itself. The scientists were able to see that in the motion of the jet, the actual jet was kind of not really straight. That effect is visible in this particular animation right here, and this suggests that something is dislodging the uh, jet itself as it propagates through space. In other words, it's very likely the effects of the magnetic field generated by the extremely powerful accretion disk that's spinning around the black hole. Which is something that scientists have discussed in many different studies and even tried to predict it using various accelerators, demonstrating many times that jets, under certain conditions with a lot of magnetism, do produce these unusual helical shapes, kind of like corkscrews that you see right here. The study by this wonderful person is actually one of the studies investigating this in a lot of detail. Which of course also suggests to us once again that these models that we have right here are usually a little bit too primitive. So not only are the jets almost never straight, they're almost always helical, but also the accretion disk is never really so perfect and so flat. And most of the modern simulations do show the accretion disk as this kind of a very large donut-like cloud-like formation around the black hole. And the other more obvious observations here are of course in regards to the idea of matter itself, falling into the black hole and being shredded by the black hole and releasing all of this energy and all of these particles as a result. This is obviously something we've predicted many times, but having another observation similar to this helps us to kind of confirm our theory once again and establish the effects related to black holes and accretion disks, as well as the speeds and energy of these astrophysical jets. And by the way, the length of the jet itself is probably in millions of light years. But from this angle and from this distance, it's very difficult for us to accurately establish and measure the length of this. So for now, we kind of are limited to what we see on the screen and we'll probably not get any better simply because of the distances. But all of this was of course a really important confirmation of the ability of the Event Horizon Telescope to see these distant objects and will now be able to create even better images in the future, especially if other telescopes, especially the ones orbiting the planet, can be added into this network. The more telescopes we have farther away from Earth, the higher the resolution of future images that we're going to be able to produce of various other black holes. For now, unfortunately, we've kind of reached the limit of the resolution possible with this particular setup, and images like this are unfortunately the maximum resolution we can produce. But with new facilities and new telescopes added to the network, the resolution will obviously increase, and we'll probably end up having even more videos of various interesting black holes around the universe. As far as I know, this is their next step. EHT is planning to release an actual video of a black hole and all of the material orbiting around it. It might take a few years to produce, but it's definitely going to be worth the wait. So the future release from the EHT is probably going to be an incredible video, something that will probably show us that the black holes don't really look like we think they do. As a matter of fact, they're probably going to establish a lot of new theories and a lot of new ideas that we currently don't have. Anyway, once we discover more about black holes or once EHT decides to release a new video, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, or alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that has this beautiful black hole that I'm also wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.